dialog boxes. They're cool, they're one of the reasons why we do Java, and that's what we're going over today. We're gonna to be going over two dialog boxes, and one is the message dialog, and the other is the input dialog. So in order to use dialog boxes, we have to use the JOption pane class. So right here in line 22, you can see I'm using that class, and these red squiggly lines just means we need an import. So if you right click that, and just hit fix imports, it will jump up here and it will import this for you. If not, you can just type that out. So we're gonna go over the message dialog box first. And so in the class JOPS and Pain, there is different methods to let you choose what dialog box you want. And one of, them, one of them is the show message dialog. And that takes two arguments. One of them is null and the other is what you want to ask or what you want the dialog box to say. So the null argument, we're just gonna bypass that. It's used for when you display other graphical windows, so we're not doing that today. And the other one, like I said, it's what you want to display to the screen. So we're gonna run that real quick and I'll show you. So the first thing that pops up is just a message, focus coding. And it's always gonna have a button, so when you press okay, it's gonna to jump to the next line of code. Next, we're gonna go over the input dialog box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create three string variables, first name, middle name, and last name. And in order to use the show input dialog, we can't just say it like this one, like the show message. We have to actually set that input dialog to a variable. So with first name on line 30, we're gonna say first name equals show input dialog, And that only takes one argument. It's just what you want to ask the user. So we're gonna say enter your first name, and we're gonna do the exact same thing with middle name and last name. Once again, we're just gonna do the class, which is JOPS and Pain, do the dot operator, and pick what dialog box we want to show. And that is the show input dialog. And after that, we're gonna simply display, display a message dialog box, and we're gonna say hello, first name, middle name, and last name. And you will always have to put null right here, just so that the uh, argument is passed through. So we're gonna run that real quick, and the first thing we should get is the focus coding message dialog box. We're gonna press okay, jump to the next line of code, and now we're gonna say enter your first name. So this is the input dialog box, as you can see here. And it's gonna have two buttons, okay and cancel. Okay is for when you're done doing the input, and cancel is if the user does not wanna do that anymore. So we're gonna input the first name, press okay. We're gonna input the middle name, We're gonna press OK, and we're gonna input the last name. And so the next thing should happen is we're gonna show the message dialog box saying hello to the person. And now it's gonna say, hello, the Bruce Lee. And that is the message dialog box, just to show you that it works. We're gonna press OK and get out of the program. So that is the show input dialog and the show message dialog boxes. They're pretty simple. You just have to get familiar with the J option pane class. So the only difference when taking input with the J option pane is it only takes strings. So with the scanner class, you can take the next int, next double, next line, and you can go so on. But with the J option pane class, you can only take strings. So when you have to take numbers, you have to convert those numbers. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So right here, we're going to create a couple of variables, price, tax, and overall price and string input. So input is what we're gonna to use to pass in the data. So input is what the user is gonna to use to pass in the data. And right here on line 44, you can see that input is initialized to the show input dialog box and we're gonna ask the user to enter in the price. So after the user enters the price, we have to convert that price string to a double so we can actually use it. So after we ask the user to enter in the price, we need to convert that string variable to a double so we can use it to figure out the overall price. So Java has what is called wrapper classes, and basically that means you can convert a primitive data type into an object. So the wrapper class is always just gonna be a capital letter, and it has a wrapper class for all the doubles, I mean, all the data types. So just like double, we have a keyword. Well, you can also type double with a capital D, and it's similar to the same thing, except for it's a class that has certain methods that you can use. So you can see here, we can compare two doubles, we can see if it's infinite, and we can see 
the sum of two doubles, and what we're going to use is called parse double. So what that means is we're going to convert a string to a double. So there's also a wrapper class for integer, not a capital N. There is a wrapper class for float. It just begins with a capital letter. So what we want to do is parse a double. So we're going to say double capital D, and we're going to use that method parse double, and that argument we're going to pass through is going to be the input that the user has entered. So that's going to parse that input to a double and save it to the variable price. So next you can see that overall price is equal to price minus price times tax. That's how we figure out the overall. So in line 52, we're going to use a show message dialog box and we're going to pass in the overall price is using concatenation and then passing in the variable. So I'm going to run that real quick and show you. We're going to go through all the other dialog boxes that we inputted. Okay, so we're going to ask the end of the price, $10. So now it's going to say the overall price is $9. So we're just going to press OK. And it is ran successfully. So the last thing I want to say is on line 56 right here, usually we don't have the system.exits. But when you use the JOpsin pane class, you have to use the system.exit because in the background, the class is running different tasks and we have to let those tasks know when to end. And that wraps up the dialog boxes and I'll show you the focus points.